All right, everyone, thanks for coming to, to another video. Um, today is going to be different than the car stuff or the home improvement stuff, uh, just because I had surgery in my hand uh, last week and not able to do the stuff that I would need to do. Uh, this video is going to be of me doing uh, just a walkthrough of uh, my bourbon. Um, bourbon is one of the things that I do enjoy. Uh, have a small collection. I would say it's more of a novice or... Um, intermediate level uh, collection. Most stuff is findable, um, but uh, some stuff is just a bit harder than others. All right, so thanks for clicking into uh, to another video. Uh, this one's not gonna be on cars. It's not gonna be on home improvement stuff. This is actually gonna be on uh, one of my hobbies or interests um, in our, what I guess would be a dining room, but uh, my wife and I have turned it into our little pub room. Uh, so behind me, you've got, uh, call it our more frequently used liquors. Um, my wife makes a lot of cocktails, so have a whole bunch on uh, the lower shelf. And then on the upper shelf, uh, we've got pretty much bourbon. Uh, I think we've got maybe a rye or two up there, but um, predominantly bourbon, uh, which is my, my go-to drink. Um, and then my wife's cocktails, and then we have a whole liquor cabinet um, uh, on the other side of the, the bar. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and go through, um, focus just on the bourbon uh, in this clip, being that it is my novice collection, I guess. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so the first three that I'm gonna go through are the Weller 12 year, Weller 107, or um, Old Weller uh, Antique, and then the Weller Special Reserve. Um, all of these are actually unopened just because I know how hard it is to find them and it's taken me a bit to, to be able to track these down uh, at reasonable prices. Um, Weller Special Reserve, in my opinion, is nothing really special. Um, it's, a, it's an okay bourbon, but for the price and how hard it is to find, I don't think it's really worth the effort nor the money. Um, getting into the Weller um, 107 or the Weller Antique, um, I actually think this is my favorite Weller in in their lineup. Um, if you can find it in a liquor store at regular prices, I think the price point is absolutely fair for what it is. Um, if you choose, you can buy for roughly double um, and get it from a, a wholesaler or a third party vendor. Getting into the Weller 12 year, um, I actually got this bottle on, on a trade, uh, a place that I was actually storing my car um, when I lived back in New Orleans. All right, so the next three are also coming from uh, the Buffalo Trace Distillery as well. Um, so I've got the Bourbon Cream. Um, so if you've had Bailey's, it's a, it's a very similar um, uh, liqueur, uh, but it does have a little bit more of a bourbon uh, flavor. Um, I actually really like that. I hate Bailey's, but I actually really do enjoy this. Um, I know my wife has used it in some, some coffee uh, a couple times. Uh, next up would just be regular good old uh, Buffalo Trace. And again, for, for what it is and how hard it is to find now, uh, I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Um, to me, it's a, it's a $20 bottle, or at least it tastes like a $20 bottle should. Um, it would be for mixing or serving on ice. Again, nothing really special. Um, getting into my... Uh, I wouldn't call it a go-to um, because the bourbon market is just ridiculous to find stuff again. But uh, Eagle Rare, I think at normal prices, call it $30 a bottle, I think is absolutely a perfect bottle. Um, again, when I lived in New Orleans, it was easy to find. Uh, I would have probably three or four bottles at my house just at any point in time and probably would pour at least a, a drink or two um, every week on it. Um, that being said... There's better, there's worse. Um, I actually have a couple other from the, the Buffalo Trace Distillery, which I'll show here in the next little bit. All right, so the last two from Buffalo Trace that are downstairs at least, um, that are not duplicates or extras. Um, I've got very easily recognizable Blanton's. Um, it was actually part of a birthday present from my wife. Um, it came with the, I think it was a three bottle pack with the the, the version that's released out to the Japanese market, I think, um, and then just the, the original. 
And then the one I'm actually most proud of, uh, my one of my favorite, if not the favorite bourbon I have as far as flavor goes, uh, is Elmer's. So Elmer T. Lee, um, again, it's also made out of Buffalo Trace. Uh, it is an allocation based. Um, I've not had a very easy time finding it. Um, in a store for purchase, I've now found a total of three bottles. Uh, one in Louisville back in like 2013 or so when I was visiting a friend. Um, and then couldn't find any until like 2017. Um, uh, actually found a place in Seattle that had two bottles. Um, and I had two friends that work at Amazon just down the street from the store, uh, actually go buy the bottles for me, um, on my lunch break or on their lunch break, uh, to ensure that no one else would get them. Uh, I actually do have a couple more bottles of Elmer's now. Um, took some good fortune from, uh, from the holidays to, to help replenish what I have. So I'm no longer afraid to actually open a bottle and enjoy something that I do enjoy a lot. All right, so uh, the next three bottles up uh, are all from Rabbit Hole Distillery in uh, Nulu um, area of Louisville. Uh, so I actually didn't know anything about this distillery until I went up to Louisville for my bachelor party um, last year. And um, we ended up trying uh, the different ones they had. I actually, my favorite one there was, I believe, uh, would be this guy, uh, the Derringer. Um, I think I was probably the only one in our group that actually liked this one the best. Um, my brother really liked their rye, which I bought um, uh, more for, for him if he comes over and wants to have some. Um, and then I've got their uh, just regular bourbon, their Cave Hill. All right, so the next two up are both from Uncle Nearest. Um, both of these were presents uh, from my in-laws, my mother-in-law and father-in-law. Um, last year, or two years rather ago, they gave um, the 1856, um, which is a 100-proof uh, uh, Tennessee whiskey. And this past um, holidays, the 1884, which is uh, a 93-proof uh, small batch whiskey. Um, haven't tried the 1884 yet, but I've heard good things. Um, yeah, let's get to the next move. All right, so the next two, we've got uh, Good Times and then the Burning Chair. Um, I think Good Times was a, a present from my wife or my wife's family um, um, two, two holidays ago. Um, I don't remember anything about how it tastes, so I don't really have any, any opinions there. Um, and then this past um, season, my birthday and the holidays go pretty close together, so a lot of these are kind of seasonal gifts um, for my birthday and, and the, the holiday season. Uh, this is the Burning Chair. I uh, knew nothing about it until, uh, until it was given to me and I looked it up. Um, instead of being a Kentucky or Texas, Arkansas area um, uh, spirit, this is actually out of uh, the greater Napa area, I believe. Um, so it's a winemaker that uh, tried to just start doing uh, whiskeys. Uh, haven't opened it yet. Don't know anything about it. Uh, one of these days I'll probably get into, into get, trying some of these that I haven't had yet. All right, so the next three they've got, um, I've got Michter's um, Small Batch. Uh, Garrison Brothers, and then I've actually got Wild Turkey um, Rye. Uh, did not realize that I had this, so uh, I might might free up some space uh, on the shelf above uh, and get both of these ryes that I have up there uh, stored somewhere else. Um, Garrison Brothers uh, out of Texas. Um, last time I had it, I remember it being great. Um, I haven't opened this one recently or yet. But um, at least last time I was in, in the Texas area, um, I did have a glass and I did really enjoy it. As far as the Michter's um, small batch, I think right now this is making my way into one of the better, um, I'm not going to call it value because I don't think it really is a value. It's like a $45 bottle, at least here in uh, North Carolina. Um, but this bottle is pretty readily uh, available and findable in most liquor stores in my general area. Um, so good quality and pretty easily findable. That's 
that's putting it to the top of the list as far as uh, enjoyment and not stressing about, oh, where can I find another? So for, for that purpose, um, it, is, it is pretty high on my list right now. Um, if anyone was to give me a bottle of it for, for housewarming or birthday or special event or whatever, I would always be happy with Michter's. All right, so the next three I've got are all three from Orphan Barrel. Um, we've got the Forged Oak, which I think is a 15 year. Uh, yeah, it's a 15 year. Then I've got the Barter House, which at that time was a 20 year. And then I also have the Rhetoric, which my bottle is, yeah, my bottle is a 23 uh, year for it. Um, it's actually, to me, it's a funny story about how I got introduced to this. Um, I was actually visiting aunt and uncle in, in the greater Houston area, and he offered me a, a taste of the barter house and then a taste of the rhetoric. His rhetoric, I think, was a 20, the 21, um, so was a couple years before uh, I found and, and got my own. Um, but it was one of those oh my god, I am going to find this in a store and I am going to buy it. Um, that's just pretty much what, what my mission was when I got back to where I lived in Seattle. Um, I actually did find a Total Wine that had all three of them um, on the shelf and I walked out with all three. So <laughs> I think that particular day was uh, $500 for, for the three bottles uh, based on the experience that I had trying these two uh, with family. Um, that being said, uh, that same uncle hides uh, both of these whenever I come visit. Um, he thinks I'm not aware, but every time I come there, uh, he lets my wife know that he's already hidden the good stuff, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, all three of these orphan barrels I really enjoy. Um, I do think the barter house is is a really good, uh, again, not to use the word bargain for like a $100, $110 bottle of, of whiskey, but... Um, I think it's absolutely delicious for what it is, and it wasn't nearly as bad as this, the sticker shop for, for buying rhetoric. So again, I saved the rhetoric for more special occasions. Uh, I think last time I had some was with my brother in Seattle uh, when I was actually getting ready to move away from Seattle down to New Orleans, uh, so ending a chapter. All right, so I recognize I goofed uh, with all the Buffalo Trace um, bottles earlier in the video and uh, forgot to put E.H. Taylor in that list. Uh, it's Colonel E.H. Taylor, small batch. Uh, it's also done through the Buffalo Trace um, uh, conglomerate or, uh, or big organization uh, for the distillery. Um, I also got uh, Old Forester 1920, which is 113, 115 proof. Um, and then Angel's Envy. Um, Angel's Envy, I actually do have another one, maybe two bottles upstairs as well. Um, so there are a handful of bottles that um, I should be able to drink uh, more out of and, and not be as concerned being that I do have spares. I think I have three or four Michters, uh, a couple Elmers, uh, a couple Angel's Envy as well. All right, so for the next distillery I have, um, it's from Calumet Farms. Um, I actually have their 8, 10, and 12 year, uh, and again, I have multiple bottles of the 12 year. Um, so one of the funny stories with Elmer's and now 12 year is when I first found out how good uh, Elmer's was, and I saw it at one of one of the places I looked for back in 2013, uh, I actually had a, um, a couple bets with my brother that basically, instead of calling it a whatever it is, just a bottle of liquor, call what you want. Uh, under a certain price point and he called Elmer's for it and well it, it has taken me until 2023 to be able to have uh, have a spare bottle to be able to give to, to my brother and actually close that bet out from probably 2016 so finally it'll be done um, for future bets we've just said Calumet 12 year uh, we both really like it and it's readily uh, available in, in a lot of the stores in our area so why I have the 8, 10, and 12, and I know there are other, um, other vintages as well, but um, when my wife and I were actually looking at wedding venues, um, in between, call it day two and day three of the venues that we were looking at, um, I actually stopped into 
liquor store back home, um, and I picked up the Calumet 10 year. It was, I don't remember what the price was, probably around $80 or so for the bottle. And the, the intent was every time that we crossed a milestone for, uh, for our wedding planning, she and I were going to pour ourselves a glass of this and we made sure that we did count out the number of uh, milestones that we have. So basically we could each have uh, have a sip at each milestone. Now there is some still in here because once we got much closer to the actual wedding, um, my, my work life ramped way the heck up uh, being that I, I travel for, for Amazon at that time of the year, I am on the road five to seven days a week. And she had just started her new role as well. So life got in the way. Um, we still have, uh, have a couple drinks to finish off of this. Um, this particular bottle of the 12 year, it remains unopened just because, well, the 10 year was for our, uh, our pre-wedding planning. And the 12 year is going to be pretty much for, for milestones or, uh, or bigger anniversaries or whatever it's going to be. So this bottle will take us a, a fair bit to get through. Um, but again, have other bottles of it, uh, that are more for drinking, uh, not for celebrating. Um, and then the eight year, uh, I don't really have a good reason for having the eight year, honestly, other than I really love the 10 year. I really love the 12 year. Uh, let's see if the eight year is, uh, is just as good. I won't buy the eight year again. All right. So the last three that I have on the shelf, uh, I've got 1792 small batch, um, Basil Hayden's, uh, regular. And then I have, um, Maker's Mark private selection, uh, it's for the Raleigh bourbon select number 19. Um, I'll be honest, I fell victim to marketing on this one. Um, it was at one of the local shops towards closer to, to where I grew up and ended up being that my high school football coach and athletic director, now that he's retired, he's doing a um, um, liquor store as a part-time job. And he told me about it, uh, sounded good. Hadn't seen uh, old coach in probably, probably 14, 15 years at that point. Um, so I said, sure, why not? Let's buy a bottle and see how it is. It's another one that it's okay, but I, I wouldn't buy it again. All right, so those are uh, the bottles of bourbon that I have on, uh, at least on my shelf uh, for, for this small collection. Um, there's 30 bottles that are, I think, currently up there. And depending on bottle shape, I've got space for either another four or five bottles. Um, I do have a Basil Hayden Toast. Um, that was another gift this holiday season. Uh, I've got that one upstairs with other duplicates. Uh, I guess I could bring it down. Um, really, really not sure if I want to or not, or if it just gives me uh, some space to put some of the, uh, the less known or less uh, popular uh, bourbons up on the shelf and, uh, and continue along tasting the way through. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip around and show kind of the, the rest of the liquor storage area. Um, I'm not gonna go through any of the, the bottom shelf. Um, it's kind of just a, a pretty big hodgepodge of different things. Um, anywhere from tequilas to gins to a uh, couple different types of rum, vodkas, flavored liqueurs, um, so forth and so forth and so forth. Basically, the bottom row goes into a cocktail um, if you want a bourbon in your cocktail, um, we would go to the other, uh, other cabinet and probably get the bourbon out of, uh, out of it. All right. So this is, uh, just our liquor cabinet. Um, we've got a good bit of space in here that we can probably fill back up. Um, now that we're in the new year, uh, we generally try to keep some of the mixers, um, and a couple wines on the left side. Um, and then on the right side on the bottom, we've got, we got a heck of a lot of Kahlua. So we've got two handles there, um, uh, two uh, handles of Tanqueray. We've got a little bit of, uh, of Bullet left for, uh, for making cocktails. And some rum chata and vanilla vodka. 
Um, again, goes into some of the cocktails that uh, my wife makes. And then we have this, uh, I call it a spice rack uh, of airplane bottles or mini bottles or shooters, whatever you guys call them uh, in your local area. Um, but we used to be part of a cocktail of the month club. And with that, they would provide uh, all you need to be able to make that particular cocktail. So um, we've got a couple of bourbons, a couple of rums, uh, a couple of vodkas, a couple of gins and so forth. Um, and then we also have some associated syrups or, uh, or mix-ins for particular cocktails. Um, I do like having it uh, stored that way. It's a lot easier to see stuff, uh, makes better use of the space. Then again, we have some just extra bottles in the back. Uh, triple sec, uh, crack and some brandy. I think got a Bailey's and an Amaretto back there. Um, I actually don't know what this bottle is here. Ah. Um, so that bottle next to the Kraken in the far back is actually Jefferson Reserves, uh, I think pre-mixed Manhattan cocktail, um, that probably should, uh, should give a shot here once in a while. But again, it's a pre-mixed cocktail, um, pretty much just served with rice. All right, so uh, that's that's the bourbon side of uh, side of my hobbies. Um, I was planning and hoping for this to be a shorter video, a little, a little bit easier to do, being that uh, with my hand being where it is right now, uh, can't really do any wrenching on the car, can't do any of the other home improvement projects that I uh, got on the list. So trying to keep consistent with putting videos out, trying to keep getting more uh, more comfortable speaking to to an unknown audience, um, but that's. That's the bourbon. Um, now that I'm done uh, recording this video, I'm going to actually go pour myself a glass now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.